chupón de la lengua. Sorry, Tare, I couldn't hear you. I just. Oh, it's okay. Okay. I'm definitely we're coming in. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Isabela's Torre de Marisco class. I hope all of you guys are happy to see Isa back as much as I am and um, always with some really good food. So, Isabela, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself, and let's get this class started. Let's do it. Welcome, everybody, to another cooking class with Northgate. I'm your host for this evening. My name is Isabela, and I'm really excited to be back in cooking with Northgate. Uh, and with this class, that is Redescubre la Cuaresma, and today we're going to be cooking uh, Torre de Marisco, so a seafood tower, Mexican style, and a capirotada. And I'll get to the capirotada a little bit later on. I'll explain because this is my version of a capirotada before everybody starts saying, nah, si no se hace, si no la hace mi abuela, si no la hace mi suegra. Uh, this is my version of the capirotada. And I think um, we can talk more about that when we get there. Uh, but a little bit about me for those of you who are new and or tuning back in. Um, I'm a chef and a food photographer and a food stylist. And I'm now a mom, which keeps me really busy. Um, but I'm really excited to be cooking with here with you guys. These classes, if you want to ask questions, if you want me to pace, if you're cooking along and you want me to pace myself, uh, just let me know. If you have any questions, place them in the chat. And we're always happy to help. Uh, very casual uh, cooking class, but very really excited to learn um, and teach you guys. Okay, so let's get started. If you guys have any questions, remember, place them in the chat and we'll read them out loud. We're gonna start, uh, roll, roll, we're going to start with our oven to 375 degrees. So we have preheating, so we can later put our capirota in there, okay? Uh, but first we are gonna start with our torre de mariscos. And it's a restaurant style torre de mariscos. It's pretty, pretty hefty and pretty, Pretty, uh, it's very pretty. Um, but um, but um, it's really nice. You're gonna impress your guests, your friends, uh, everybody when they actually see you. They won't think you actually made this. Uh, but it's really easy. Just a lot, a couple of steps to get this ta beautiful tower going. And we are going to start with our um, with our seafood layer. Okay, so here I have, here, and I'm gonna grab some pork so I can show you. You'll be needing half a pound of raw, jumbo raw shrimp without the tail, just like this, and I'll show you. This has been cooking in lime juice for about 20 to 25 minutes with some red onion, okay? But this is raw shrimp, raw shrimp, jumbo, Mexican raw shrimp. And you're gonna add just, just enough of lime juice so it covers it and you're gonna place it covered in the fridge for about 20 to 25 minutes. Eso es el camarón curtido. So this is our raw lime cooked shrimp, cured shrimp. And in here, we have half a pound of scallops, gallos, Thinly sliced, and they had a beautiful, beautiful uh, scallops at Northgate. Nice and big scallops that I thinly sliced. Also, these are cured in lime juice for 20 to 25 minutes. You need enough lime juice just, just to cover them and season with salt and pepper. The same with our shrimp. We're going to season with salt and pepper, cover with plastic wrap, and place in the fridge. So these are good to go and ready. You are also going to be needing a small octopus, but Guess what? Northgate has an octopus that's already been cooked for you because if you've ever tried to cook raw octopus, it's, it's a big deal. And that's why Northgate cooks it for you and you can buy it fully cooked and I'll show you exactly how it looks. Nice and head and everything and it's delicious and it's perfectly cooked. Y no sale chicloso y no sale así, you know, bad octopus can be really bad. Um, and then we're gonna move on to one large cucumber but 
this is what we're gonna do. So once you've peeled that cucumber and then you've got rid of, first before cutting into it, you're gonna cut about five to six round slices, okay? And this is our base for our torre. So first you're gonna need five to six round cucumber slices and then the rest of it, you're gonna cut into half moons just like this, okay? And then you're going to be needing one uh, red onion thinly sliced. Half of it you're going to reserve just like this raw. And the other half is the one that you're going to add to your shrimp. Okay. So this shrimp onion mix is the one that goes in the fridge. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Question. Um, the question is, what can we sub for the octopus? My husband doesn't like it. Uh, you can add salmon. You can add your favorite fish. Um, you can. You can always add more raw shrimp or, or cooked shrimp because we're also going to be using cooked shrimp and I'll grab, go and grab that as well. Uh, what else can you use? Um, you can also use clams, um, fresh clams, crab. You can also use crab, a cangrejo. So just basically sub it for your favorite seafood. And if it's not octopus, you can do more. You can do more scallops if he likes those. That tastes really good. Or just do more shrimp. I would do more shrimp because. The el camarón curtido is so delicious, you guys. It's, I love it. It's my favorite. Any more questions? No. Okay. Let me go grab my octopus. So we're in here we have, look at this, you guys. This is what I'll be chopping. I'll show you this little baby. It's so nice and fresh. It doesn't even smell like my smells like octopus. It's so nice. Look at this. It's this, and I asked for a smaller one because not we can't fit every like a huge octopus in this tower. With the torre, but look at this. Already nice and fully cooked. And this one I also like to make it salandiado on the over on the grill with a nice little like chile, chile mayo. So good. So this is our octopus, and I'm gonna cut our octopus. I am going to get rid of the head though. You can eat it. It's it's mm -hmm. e totally edible, but I just don't need so much. <laughs> and I'm going to cut into it just like this. And I am using the tentacles. They're actually my favorite part of the octopus. You're going to cut it into chunks, not too big, but not too small as well. You do want to get nice and chunky pieces of that octopus in your tower, just like that. Just like that. People who are in this house, if you have any questions, place them in the chat as well, please. I'm answering the questions via the chat. Thank you. I have an audience over here that's waiting for this tower and they're asking questions, but I told them to ask like the rest of the class, the rest of the people who joined the class. Thank you. Oof, pulpo. I, I actually love octopus. When I was little, I would add, um, ask for taco de pulpo or ceviche de pulpo, and people thought it was weird, but, but I, I love octopus. But look at this. Saves you time. It's already cooked. Nice and fully cooked. You can also make uh, an octopus carpaccio. It's really good. If you thin, super thinly slice your octopus perfect this one was actually a little a little on the bigger side this octopus so i'm only going to use this much yes more tentacles i'm going to use and this is going to reserve Questions, comments, no. concerns. And here I have my cooked shrimp without a tail, clean, deveined, no skin, just like that, that I also bought at Northgate. So this tower has cooked shrimp and also cured lime shrimp. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands and we're gonna continue. So moving on, 
We are going to make, oh, and also this recipe calls for one whole avocado that I'm gonna cut uh, right before serving because I want it to be nice and fresh and I don't want it to go bad, but we're gonna continue. We don't have all of our ingredients, but we need our salsa maizquera, which I love. But I also have, I also like to mention this. Recipe calls for five to eight chiles de árbol, dry chiles de árbol. If you're not into too much spiciness, just go for two or three, okay? Because we also are adding hot sauce to our salsa maizquera, right? So what you'll be needing for this recipe, to cure our, our seafood, you'll be needing about one and a half cups, okay? To cure your shrimp and your scallop. And then for our salsa, we need one cup of freshly squeezed lime juice in here. Sorry, we have special effects going on with that. This is real life. This is live and real life, okay? So you'll be needing three fourths cup of flamaco. I'm gonna eyeball it about that much. Oh, and then we'll be needing five tablespoons of soy sauce. Mm, it already smells good. We have it even blended. Two tablespoons of Maggi. Four tablespoons of Worcestershire, <laughs> or as we call it, Mexican salsa inglesa. Easier. Or Lee Pairings, which is this one. I bought all my ingredients in round cake, so salsa inglesa. I use Maggi. I use soy sauce. Now I'm using oyster sauce, because Northgate has like a little Asian section, uh, and I love to buy the oyster sauce. And this is gonna add sweetness and a little bit of, uh, not tanginess, but mainly sweetness, but also uh, it's gonna give it body. It's gonna give it a little body to our sauce. Here. Just like that. And then for, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna actually do five chilitos now, okay? And for your hot sauce, use your favorite hot sauce. Don't go out and buy a specific one. Use something you have at home, like Tapatio, Valentina, eh, mm, well, se me fueron nombres. Yo, I bought Tamazula, there's also Guacamaya, but Huichol, and I'm gonna use um, recipe calls for four tablespoons, like I mentioned. If you need uh, it to be not as spicy, go for one or two, because you're already adding chilitos, just like that. Perfect. And also uh, two tablespoons of Tabasco that I already mixed, pre-mixed uh, with my uh, hot sauce, okay, you guys? So this is where I'm excited to have my hat and also two tablespoons of olive oil. Then eyeball it, just like that. That smells so good, you guys. And now we're gonna, I wanted to say that blend until everything is completely combined and mixed. I'm going to rub a little more. <laughs> I don't um, ask for that sauce to be uh, seasoned with salt and pepper because it does have a lot of soy sauce and all, all the side sauce megas tend to be on the, the salty side. So just try it and if you think it needs a little bit of uh, saltiness, um, go for it. If it's always, I always like to say my recipes, you can season to taste because we all have different uh, taste buds. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try it. Mm. It is spicy, but it's really good. We have a question about yes. the sauce. Yes. How much oyster sauce was used? Uh, three tablespoons of oyster sauce. And you can add a little bit more. It's not super sweet, but it will add a little bit of sweetness. So if you want to go more on the sweet side, you can add a little more if you want. But three tablespoons. Okay. Now we're getting closer to the fun part, you guys. Let me grab my avocado. Okay. So it's some mascara situation over here. I'm gonna 
slice my avocado. Okay. And for our assembling, you'll be needing do a plate that has a little bit of a rim on it because you will have a lot of salt sound that's flowing right there. And you'll be needing a little bit of uh, avocado oil, pan, or and something to grease our one quart cylinder mold. You can also use one from sour cream, um, like another another container that you have. It can also be more on the short side and on the wider side. It's up to you. This is what I had at home, and this is what I'm going to use, and it works perfectly. And it's a one quart cylinder mold. Okay, got my avocado. The spoon because I'm gonna scoop out my avocado and I'm gonna slice it. Okay, scoop it out like that. Rest of my avocado. You guys, it smells good. Ya huele, ya huele a restaurante mariscos aquí. And I'm not even done assembling. Come on, you have it even started. It smells good. That's, that salsita marisquera is also good like for an aguachile. If you don't want to do the tower and you want to do like an aguachile or you want to do like a seafood platter, you can also put everything, arrange it like una chagolita and add your salsita marisquera on top as well. Chop my avocado just like this. Chop this one. 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 Okay, we're gonna add our rounds of cucumber as our base. Just like that. There we go. Okay, pepino. Then we are going to add our, sorry, it's my face, it's all the way up. And then we're gonna add our cooked shrimp. And I try to use like the round, the round part of the shrimp. I try to place it outside, just like this on the outer side, just so we're gonna give it a nice little shape to our shrimp. I mean, to our tower. And every layer we're gonna try and press down with our hands, okay? Just so everything's nice and tight. Nice little layer. And you can you can add the whole layer of your shrimp right, right then and there, but I like to reserve a little bit to add a couple layers, like uh, add a bit more shrimp of the cooked shrimp on top. Keep pushing down, don't worry if it moves, it's fine. Just like that, see, I'm adding a little layer of the cooked shrimp. Then I'm gonna add some of the scallops. Remember these have been curing in lime and they have also been seasoned with salt and pepper. And I'm going to add, after the scallop, I'm going to add my first layer of sensita my skin. Mm 
birth went down, not to put down there. Push now. Okay, ready for our Santita Marisquera? Have my first dispense. Okay, then I'm going to add some red onion, not some cucumber. I mean, there's no specific order. Uh, it's going to look nice and pretty anyways. Don't worry about it. Just like that. Look at this little nice half mold we've got going on there. Push down. Also, I not a little so close corner. Maybe not somebody scared out me. Careful about that. I'm going to add some red onion. Some of that pulpo. A little tentacle over here. Here, keep pushing down. Just like that. Well, you're not a puppet, but it's okay. We can move it back. <laughs> Perfect. I'm going to add more of that salsita marisquera. Okay. I'm going to continue. I'm going to add a little bit more of that. Oh, I need my avocado. So I can start adding avocado. So I'm going to finish with avocado. But I also want to have more avocado. Wash my hands because I need to season my avocado with a little bit of salt. Okay. And then I'm going to continue more of that cooked shrimp, just a little bit more. Just a little layer of cooked shrimp. Remember, keep pressing down. And I'm going to add my camaroncito curtido. Look at that, you guys. That's looking nice and beautiful. Any questions? No. I'm also going to add uh, some of that cebollita that we've cured in our wine, okay? Oh. And of course, I'm going to add my salsita marisquera. Oh, look at that. That's okay. looking nice and pretty already. Yeah. Se me hizo la boca. Now I feel like I need a beer. I don't, all of a sudden, I'm thirsty now. De la mala. <laughs> no wonder all, all, no wonder all your friends want them. Yeah, uh, this will pair really nicely with a michelada or even with a glass of white, really cool white wine. Okay, you guys. And I'm going to top it off with my... Remember, you have to get your hands dirty. No pasa nada. No pasa nada. I'm going to keep it in the smaller size so I can have my tortita. And for this, for this, oh, they're almost gone. 
Uh, I like to buy my, las tostadas de bicheras from Northgate. These guys, there's uh, tostadas, regular tostadas, there's las tostadas coronela that I like to buy from Menosole or Menudo, and these are cevicheras. They're called um, tostada raspada. And you can see they have like little like bubbles or air bubbles, raspada, because it's literally tiene solito. Uh, and they're the best because they're the ones that um, los que aguantan el juguito del ceviche, la torre, you name it. So I'm gonna season with salt. Be generous with your salt with your avocado. And I might add a little bit of some pizza rice for that. There we go. Are you guys ready for the big reveal? So this is what's supposed to look like. I don't even want to press it down anymore. Okay, listos. There you go, you guys. <laughs> you can breathe now, people. That is our, maybe you can do a little close up. I won't get near it so it lasts. Man, a torrecita. And then you can add more of, uh, if you want to add like salsa negra, or you have like a spicy sauce at your house, I'm gonna add extra, but. Look at that, you guys. Nice goes, you guys, for this cuaresma, or for any nice, well, I'm, I'm not gonna say nice Southern California day, but they've been a little whack lately, so. Uh, so just for a nice day at home, uh, or carne asada, you can use it as an appetizer, uh, you name it, or just a little gathering. Easter, it's a great appetizer. Uh, no, muy buena botana. You've got a lot of protein in there. You've got lots of veggies. You've got nice little colors. Si se va impresionar la suegra. I would say. Any questions, you guys, before we move on to capirotada? They said you can also put it in un molcajete. Oh, yeah, you can definitely also put it in a molcajete, and that way the sauce stays nice and smooth. And if you put the molcajete in the freezer uh, before, uh, and, then, and then serve your torre or serve your mariscos just like this, that would be really good. Because molcajetes maintain their temperature a lot. Questions, comments? Are we done with La Torre? Woo, see, we are done because it's starting to, somebody wants to eat it and it's starting to get some advice. Okay, let's see. Questions? No questions. No questions. I can actually smell my little bowel that I need to take out of the oven. It's for later, you guys. It's for later. Okay, ready for capiotada? Can we do it? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay. So, capirotada. Capirotada. This is a capirotada de plátano, de plátano, nuez, y dulce de leche. Okay, let me just clean up a bit. Like I mentioned, your oven should be preheating to 375 degrees. Ah, perfect. Wipe down of our maisco set. Bear with me, you guys. 
Okay, ready. This is what you'll need for your capiota, okay? Have my ingredients over here. You need a, a baking dish. You need a a, a baking dish, un pyrex, a oven safe dish so you can bake your capiotada. Okay. You'll be needing three eggs. You'll be needing one, which is a 12 um, fluid ounce evaporated milk can. You'll be needing a 14 ounce cond sweet and condensed milk, la lechera. I also like to use this dulce leche because it's already um, squeezable and nice and ready to go. And then you'll be one cup of brown sugar, a pinch of salt, one cup of, of, of chopped pecans, nuez. You'll be needing one cup of whole milk. You'll be needing two teaspoons of cinnamon powder and one tablespoon of vanilla. But to the important part, you'll be needing Cuatro conchas. I like to use, since this is a banana capirotada, I like to use the yellow ones because I'll show you what I do. I like to decorate my capirotada with them as well as use. But what you'll be needing is un pan, un picor, which is basically, es un primo de Jalisco de la concha. That's what it is. It's literally like a huge concha, but it's a little different. So, son parientes, pero no es lo mismo, okay? So this is your pan picor. And you can find it at Northy. And this is a, they make a 16 ounce pan picon. And this is what we're going to chop, okay? Into cubes. Now I, need, now I feel like I, I don't know how to cerveza. Now I need a little coffee. Un cafecito. Mm, it's so good. The, it's like moist, but dense at the same time. It's really good. But moving on. I'm going to chop. No, what I should do first is I should make my my base, my liquid base, so I can later throw my, it's gonna be easier. Okay, so in here I'm gonna add my one cup of whole milk, yeah. my tablespoon of vanilla extract, my two teaspoons of cinnamon, cinnamon, my pinch of salt, my can of evaporated milk, we were talking about that this reminds us of our abuelitas and that we used to drink. Well, I like when I drink coffee with um, with uh, leche carnation, it reminds me of my, like my, well, my great grandma used to like drink coffee with this and milk. And then my mom said her grandma used to give her that with cereal. So that's a really intense cereal situation, but yeah. Okay, lechera. Oof. So traditional capirotada has like a piloncillo syrup that, um, but this is a little, like I mentioned, it's my version. It's a little different, um, but it's what I like to eat here at my house. Okay. Oof. This I can like literally go like this. Okay. We're gonna do our half of our half a cup of our brown sugar is gonna go in there. And then the rest I'll show you. So half of it's gonna go in here. Okay, and the other half will go in the And then start whisking this. So our bread is gonna get soaked in here. Oof. And three. Our eggs are going to help it become nice and fluffy and the, the glue to our cup of that. Okay. Let's make sure everything's nice and whisked in here. Kind of like a French toast, but I don't want to stay like a French toast because cup of that. But kind of like a bread pudding as well. And it's an easy dessert. 
And if you leave your picon or your um, conchitas out at uh, during at night for them to become a little stale, um, they'll even absorb more of the of this milk mixture. So whisking really nicely. Make sure everything's nice and whisked. Okay. There we go. Okay, so moving on to our pan picon, okay? I'm gonna cut into it, cut into cubes. And don't worry, si se despedora, or I don't know how you call it, but don't worry if it starts to crumble apart. Everything's gonna go in here and it's gonna taste nice and delicious. I mean, you've seen that capirotada. It looks like, like, it looks like this, honestly, I always thought about it like a huge mess. Capirotada looks like a huge mess, but it tastes good, so. Oh, it smells so good. And then it has like little notes of cinnamon. I can see the little pieces of cinnamon in here. I'm gonna start adding our panecito in here, okay? And then I'm gonna mix it all together. Everything. Any questions about capirotada? Or what's your favorite ingredient to add to capirotada? I know my grandma likes it with uh, platano macho and um, and prunes, I think, and poco. Uh, I know a lot of people add sprinkles. Uh, and supposedly it's, um, sorry, I don't know why I keep thinking about half the top. <laughs> Here. Our peanuts, I heard peanuts over here. We also add peanuts to it. We're adding pecans, necesita. I like um, walnuts and pecans better than peanuts. Okay. And I am eventually might use my house in this easier. You can also do this in a bowl. I have no bowl available, we were all. Uh, being used, so I'm doing it right here, but you can also do exactly what I'm doing, okay? I'm gonna add my conchas, but what I'm gonna do is not, I'm not gonna use all of them, you need four, but I'm, for the one that goes on top, I'm only using la suquita part to decorate. So I'm actually using two to decorate and two I'm cutting two. This one, you can add butter to it and some frijolitos. I think it's called a bomba de la persana. Okay. So this is my, one of my garnishes, okay? And this, these two, this is an extra one. This is from a coffee table. Okay. These, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna cut them into cubes like that. I'm going to use this. Oh, for so también huele la caramelita. They're so good, but if you can see the masa is a little different on the picor. I want to get everything nice and soaked. Ooh, everything's getting nice and soaked. Honest. I know it might look a little funky fun, but it's really good. Oh my god. It smells so good already, and it's not even like done. Yes, you can do this in a bowl. Yes, you should. My, my, should. You should. Um, no, but look. Yeah, it's going to get nice and soaked in all those leches, la lechera, canelita, that pinch of salt, vanilla. Vean eso. 
Bien, eso. Then I'm going to add the topics. Entonces, con chitas y con... Bien, eso. And we're not done. We're going to add our topics. And this one, I'm going to add What I like to do is I like to leave the sugar part just like this. Para que se vea la conchita. Okay? Just like that. Se vea. And I, like I said, I use, I'm using a yellow one. It's a banana. Capirotada. And I like how it looks. You can add all of these little crunchy sugar things on top. The garnish as well. Okay, bonita. Así se ve bonita. It's capiota. That means a little bit of a garnish, a little nice little topping. Not done yet. Almost there. And you're going to cook it, bake it. Once it's in the oven, you're going to bake it for about 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. okay. And what we have in here, I'm just gonna, you'll be needing one cup of butter melted and that remaining half a cup of brown sugar in here. I'm gonna mix. You're gonna add a pinch of cinnamon in here and a pinch of salt. And this is going to be our little glaze on top of our capirotada. But let's not forget our banana slices. Any questions? No questions. Loads of leche. And the dulce de leche is a garnish at the end. And Platanito. And you're going to bake uncovered, okay, you guys? I took out my other uh covered because I didn't want it. I was reheating it and I didn't want it to burn, okay? But you can add your capirota, cook it uncovered because you want to get a little nice and golden on top. Oh, you'll be needing two banana slices, but I didn't mention how many, but you'll be needing two. Okay, this is this. Yes. for dessert, or for even for breakfast, con pancito. This one does not have queso, so more on the, like I said, it's a version of a capirotada. But that's what I love about cooking. Everybody has their own version. Their abuelita has their own version uh, of a recipe. And nobody's right or wrong. I mean, there are traditional recipes, uh, but nobody's, when you, you're cooking from the heart and when you're cooking with love, I don't feel like there's a wrong or a right way to cook. This over here. We're going to add our cup of. Here I have a little bit more of a cup because I want to use some more for garnish. And we're going to do our butter, you guys. Mm. Oh, that smells so cool. Well, oh, butter, brown sugar, pinch of cinnamon, pinch of salt, you can't go wrong with this. And now we are going to pour. Are you ready? Maybe you can do a little close up of this so we can see some of that brown sugar is at the bottom. It's fine. Just like that. Oh, friends. Okay. 
okay ko you guys look at So good. We're gonna add a little bit of dulce de leche in here, but we're also gonna add some in the top, okay? Like this. Okay, just a little bit so that base bakes nice and with our dulce de leche. So look at that, you guys. Esta es nuestra capirota. Yeah, put it in the oven. Let me clean up a little bit of this mess and cut it into the one that I already have prepared for you guys. I will say that um, I should leave notes around my house of food that they can't not touch, and I did not leave a note for this recipe. So, um, dije un ratoncito ya le había cortado un pedacito a la capirota. Okay, so um, you're gonna see a capirotada, but I'm gonna cut a little slice of it so you can see how it actually looks. Uh, but it's not going to be whole, okay? Alguien ya la había entrado con la capirotada. Es que está tan buena que pobrecito. Sí. Ay, es que pensé que era para la casa y pensé que mañana hacía sombra. Sí. <laughs> es verdad. It's true. It is true. You're right. But that was my my show and that was my my star of the show. But it's okay, you guys. <clears throat> it's okay. It's actually kind of hot. Pues no vean esta esquina, pero esta es mi capirota. And it's oh so Se ve rica. A little close up of it, and I'm going to cut a little slice on a plate so you guys can see how I serve it. Bueno, no se está viendo. Vean esto, vean esto, vean esto. Uy, está calientita. Mm, you guys, look at that. I will say, let it cool for about 25 to 30 minutes before cutting into it because you want all those. Um, milks uh, and juices to absorb before cutting into it. Now we're going to add. Leche. <laughs> and a little bit more of those necesitas if you like. Look at that. Capirotada de plátano y nuez. You guys. I'm going to have to try it even more. Right. Any questions? Yes? No, no questions. Okay. I'm allowed to eat. Mmm. Mmm. It's so good. Vean lo amarillito de las conchas. Mmm. Nice little garnish you have going on right there. Oh my God, it's so good, you guys. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. If you cook our recipes, please let us know. And if you post pictures, tag me and tag Northgate. We're always really excited for you uh, when you guys cook our, our food from our classes. So that's really exciting. And if you guys have any questions, let me know. Just have a comment that says, looks delicious. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Está muy rica. Muchas gracias, Isabella. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you guys soon. Sí, nos vemos pronto. Hasta luego. Bye-bye. Provecho.